Supreme Magus, Chapter 51, Darkness Falls 2. Black, lit was flabbergasted. According to their light spectrum theory, a black mana core would indicate the complete absence of any form of mana. In a world where even rocks had it, how could a living being have none? He immediately activated his life vision. Damn! Despite the small build and thin limbs, the wither was emitting an energy signature stronger than the four of them put together. To his eyes, it was like staring into a black sun. The three kings and leads surrounded the wither with a square formation alternating attacks with paralyzing spell. If the wither moved in a direction, the whole formation moved along with it, trying to prevent it getting closer or away. Lifebringer was capable of using earth and water magic, using the first to slow it down and the second to attack with a torrent of razor-sharp ice blades. Reaper used both air and earth magic using mainly air to restrict the wither's movements and lightning to attack. Speed was crucial in inflicting damage. The black fog surrounding the abomination was capable to eat away everything, even sunlight. Protector's fire magic was useless. He could only use air magic following Reaper's lead. Despite Lid's help, the situation wasn't getting any better. As the wither weakened, it always started ignoring the attackers and forcibly moved towards a new area to replenish its vitality. Lid and Sola's brains were spinning at top gear, trying to find a way to end the struggle. If it's alive, why can't we kill it? What are we? doing wrong. After another two acres of wood were lost, Lid's life vision could see the three kings mana and stamina dwindling. It was only a matter of time before the wither had all of them for dinner. Is this the level of strength of a monster? If it wasn't for the formation and their impeccable teamwork, I would have died within the first minute. Also, how in the world they have so much energy after three days of this? I'm here for barely an hour and had to use invigoration tries to replenish my energies. I don't even remember when was the last time I actually slept. My timer is ticking even faster than theirs. Magical beasts are damn overpowered. Protector, Lid called for him, being the closest to his position. I'm going to get close. There's something I have to try. If I'm right, you should notice immediately. So leave me there. If I'm wrong, pull me out as fast as you can. The Rai was too busy conjuring a lightning storm after another, so he just nodded. Lid broke the formation, entering the black mist. He immediately felt his body becoming heavier and heavier. His life and mana were slipping away with every breath, allowing the monster to get stronger again. If that thing has a black mana core, maybe it's like a darkness elemental. That should mean that light magic is its weak point. I need to get closer to hit it with my most powerful healing spell. Light and darkness magic had by nature a shorter range than the other elements and moved slower when cast it against a target. They needed to get close enough for his next spell to hit, not giving the wither enough space to dodge the sudden attack. As soon as Lid started merging his mana with words light energy, he felt a strong pull at the level of his mana core. The spell was getting drained even before manifesting. The wither suddenly looked stronger, his body 
less ethereal. His low-pitched scream of agony was now a moan of pure joy. Suddenly, Lit remembered the words of Locra Silverwing. Hers was the only book he had ever copied from the first to the last word, reading it over and over while mulling over new spells. Locra Silverwing was a magus and most likely another true magic user. Her wisdom was something lit treasured deeply. Damn it, how can I always be this stupid? This is not a video game. There's no such thing as elemental vulnerability. Magus Locra repeated over and over. Light and darkness are not opposites, but two matching pieces of the same puzzle. Darkness greatest bane is not light, but darkness itself. Lit cancelled the healing spell, spreading out a dark aura of his own. The two forces started colliding, emitted black sparks every time they came into contact, trying to cannibalize each other. Lit's aura was weaker, but he was free to manipulate it whenever the two dark fields clashed, condensing it where the enemy's defense was weaker. The wither, instead, was constantly harassed by the three kings' attacks disrupting its focus and weakening its life force. The wither's body was getting incorporeal again, but this time he could not turn his back and run. Otherwise, Lit's dark aura would consume it mercilessly. Lit was full of joy, intoxicated by bloodlust and the pride of having finally cleared the mystery. That creature is not burning with power, Rather, it's bleeding it from every pore or whatever it has. That's why it needed to relentlessly feed on so much energy. Its metabolism is akin to a shark. If it stops, it dies. The wither was getting weaker and weaker. Its high-pitched scream filled with fear and pain. Thanks to the coordinated efforts, Lit's aura managed to consume a whole chunk of the ab abomination, giving Lit a sudden, unwanted enlightening. It was very similar to what happened with Solus the first day introduced to each other. Lit was once again inside a memory. He could see himself as a young bear, striving to become strong enough to surpass Irtu's strength and become the new king in the east. Somehow, the young bear knew about mana cores and was able to refine its own in a way disturbingly similar to Lit's. But unlike Lit, the younger bear was a natural at both earth and darkness magic. So it continued to relentlessly refine its mana core even when it got painful. Its hunger for power grew along with the mana core strength, tired of waiting for its body to develop naturally. The young bear decided to try at all costs to evolve the mana core from green to cyan, so to become strong enough to claim the title of king. It fought against the pain, bravely and recklessly at the same time, until it made it. But its happiness lasted less than a day. The mana core was too big and strong for its young body and soon started to fall apart while the energy contained inside started to leak out. Darkness magic went out of control. The survival instinct kicked in, trying everything just to survive a second longer. The young bear let the dark energy overflow until it became the wither. Lit's bloodlust dissolved like a bubble. That poor young bear is not a monster. He is me. A me who failed promoting his mana core. Too eager to do things his way to care for the consequences. A me that just wants to live fighting against an unfair life. Becoming aware of his opponent's story, 
Lid no longer wanted to play with it. Its screams of agony were a torture for his heart. I am sorry for what happened to you, he said. I'll do my best to give you a peaceful death. Lit compassion didn't make him lose his cool. On the contrary, it gave him a renewed focus. He knew that to achieve his goal, he needed killing intent, not mercy. So he looked inside himself in search of hatred. He recalled his first life, his father abuse, his mother indifference, until the day Carl died. He remembered the burning anger and desperation, how it peaked before Carl's murderer got his joke sentence. His angriest day happened when he was planning Carl's funeral. Out of the blue, after ignoring their lives for years, his mother had a goal to come to his door. Crying, she asked for his forgiveness, offering to pay for Carl's memorial service. Lid could still remember his eyes seeing red, his right hand holding her throat, trying to squeeze the life out of her. That woman, that seemed too strong and cruel when he was little, and now was a frail little thing. She begged him to kill her, to let her atone for her mistakes and join her little boy in the afterlife. It was then that lit anger burned brighter than ever. He threw her out of his house, alive and well. Too little and too late. I hope you live long and a miserable life, knowing that for both your sons you are nothing but an embarrassment, something they flushed out of their lives as soon as they could. Those were their parting words. In a corner of his mind, Solace was crying for him, yet she couldn't avoid noticing that despite all he had done, Orpal amounted to nothing in Lid's mind. His existence was barely an annoyance. Focusing all that rage and anger in his fist, Lit released a stream of dark energy that struck the wither's mana core, forcing it to crumble, unable to withstand the conflicting forces from within and outside. After that, the young bear agony finally ended. Its purified spirit finally able to return to Mother's Earth embrace in search for a new life.